Black Lives Matter. 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 We love you. We love your white lives. Welcome to Rocky Mount, Virginia, a town full of Confederate symbols and Trump flags. It's a 30-minute drive from Westlake Corner, a site where KKK meetings were once held. It's also the place that Bridget Craighead calls home. I made it a point to shake the hate out of Franklin County. I never felt welcome here. I felt like I was born the wrong skin color. If I didn't start this, then nobody else would have done anything. Bridget, along with our cousin Katasha and friend Malala, founded the first chapter of Black Lives Matter in a county that's almost entirely white. This is the last place in the world that will ever have a protest for Black Lives Matter. I promise you. The death of George Floyd and the loss of other Black lives has sparked a movement, reaching even into the whitest parts of the country. But that doesn't mean everyone's listening. All lives matter. I don't believe in racism. I think it's ridiculous, it really is. It's the officers that are killing our brothers and sisters for no reason. That's why Black Lives Matter. This is what fighting for black lives looks like in one rural American town. In 2010, Rocky Mount spent more than $60,000 to rebuild this Confederate statue, saying it's central to their identity. I feel hurt. It's a symbol of hate. It lets me know that my county hates me. When we go to the courthouse, we don't feel justice. I feel like I'm going to a slaughterhouse. The protests in Rocky Mount may be small in size, but voices have only grown louder since the first protests for George Floyd. What happened Jacob recently with, Jake. Like, with Jacob Blake, you know, um, this is a continuous struggle that we're fighting every single day. Even though we're a small town, we are with the whole world that's protesting right now. Hi, Queen! How are you? There's like a comfortable racism that everybody's just kind of accepted. I see it. I hear it. But not all Rocky Mount residents agree with the protests. The slavery days, that was back in the day, man, and then everybody's putting us out that we're the bad people. Well, we can't control what happened in the past. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! I'm protesting for my kids. I'm protesting for a change for them. Would you please stop, Mari? Tear down the tyrant! Tear down the tyrant! But it's not just about organizing protests. Bridget is confronting racism on a daily basis, on the streets and in stores. This is a place um, that sells racist statues and figurines. Growing up, um, I was always afraid to even ride by, let alone to go inside. I, I feel a little nervous being here, but I am brave. A few months ago, Bridget visited Boone's Mill Produce to confront a store employee about selling racist statues. What is this? Sir, what is this? It, that, that is hurtful. If you want to buy it, you should. How much is it? 20 bucks. I'm buying it. Okay. Okay. There are a lot of people who come here who are much, much, much older than you. And they've been coming here for 90 years, 80 years, 70 years. And this is a tradition that also must be worked through. Okay. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. And as Bridget visited Boone's Mill for the second time, she had another encounter with white customers who were there at the same time. They had a black statue uh, with red lips eating a watermelon. I want to talk to them. You want to talk? Hey. Okay. No, because I, I wanted to say something to them because they did that on purpose. And that, that's the type of conversation I want to have. I want to have conversations with Trump supporters. They feel the need to yell out, vote Trump when they see me. So. <laughs> in recent years, Virginia has elected Democrats into office at every level. But in 2016, Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton in Franklin County by more than 40 percent. Right now, Donald Trump is not a representation of the black people. I feel that if black people understood that their vote does matter and that they need to be accounted for, then we can you know, get him out of office and bring somebody that is ready to move forward in this country. Meanwhile, Malala is stepping out of her comfort zone, confronting the remains of generational racism. 
Her grandfather used to tell stories about how he refused to eat at the Hub, a restaurant that historically did not allow black people to dine inside. See back here in the window behind the uh, two propane tanks, you can see that that's the window that they used to serve the black people from, and they could only just get their orders from there. That was not a part of his moral or values, and he did not comply with that, so he didn't like it, so he decided not to ever go um, or dine at the Hub. Today, Malala has decided to see whether the restaurant has changed its attitude towards the black community. Yeah, so right now we're about to go to the Hub restaurant and ask for their support with Black Lives Matter. But as we approach the restaurant, the owner asks us to leave the property. Are you surprised at all of this? I'm really not, I'm not surprised at all. Um, she didn't want us on here anywhere. We're just here and asking them of support of Black Lives Matter. And she said no. I'm thinking she was going to say no, so. There are all sorts of ways Franklin County is still resistant to change. That was clear when Rocky Mount residents were enraged over Black Lives Matter chalk art on a bridge. We wrote Black Lives Matter right here. As soon as we started writing it, somebody was screaming out F Black Lives Matter. I'm like, okay, well, we love you. <laughs> I mean, all of this was just filled up with just nothing but expressions of love. Um, they called it graffiti. They said that Franklin County has turned into Chicago. The town officials only allow the art to stay up for three days. It made me feel like I don't have a voice in this town. It made me feel even more suppressed that you allowed us to have 72 hours to express how we feel, but then what? Yet another bridge in town with graffiti and hateful words has remained untouched by town officials. I, I can clearly see the suppression. That's what's fueling me to continue to do this, because if I don't do it, then nobody else will, and they're going to continue to suppress our people here. I feel a bondage over me, and I, I'm breaking it. I'm, I'm going to continue to say something. I'm going to continue to go against what they're telling me I can and can't do. I know I can move anywhere else, but this is my town. So now this cannot be stopped. And the worst thing they can do is lock me up. <laughs> Come on, King. Bye, Mommy. See you, baby. I love you. Give me a kiss. Come here. All right. Bridget centers her fight around love because growing up, she spent too many days feeling like she didn't deserve any. Okay, I'm gonna put my hair up. This is what you call black girl magic. <laughs> I thought white was right. I didn't think that my skin color was the right skin. Because in my mind, I thought being white was better. I was about nine or 10. I didn't like myself. I thought my skin was ugly. I feel sad to know that I hated myself so much. Bridget says she suffered frequent racist abuse from other students at her school that was almost 80% white. I was suspended 33 times from Benjamin Franklin Middle School. You know, even though, you know, they called me a nigga. They felt because I throw the first punch, I should be suspended. The school declined to comment about Bridget's experience. Until June of this year, the Franklin County School Board allowed Confederate gear at school. The school board currently has just one black member. You kick your feet, kick your feet, kick your feet. Growing up in Rocky Mount, Bridget and her cousin Katasha felt like second class citizens. They never questioned why they didn't go to the pool club in town instead of driving to a lake 40 minutes away. This is where I, I learned how to swim. This is where I'm teaching my son how to swim. I just yeah. knew that black people did not go to the pool. When Bridget called out the pool for its lack of diversity on Facebook, it drew a larger response from some black community members who said they never felt welcome either. That's when the club offered to sell two new memberships for $700 which the swim club said is its standard rate. Katasha and Bridget felt priced out. First of all, I'm trying to make it as a single mama. I don't want to pay $700 to Just go to swim. swim. The club told AJ Plus it doesn't discriminate against its membership based on race and does not collect racial data from members. Coming here to the lake, it's free, it's freedom. Yeah, I mean, we have the biggest pool in the world.
As single moms, both Katasha and Bridget say their fight is for their kids to live in a place of equality. You know, we gotta break, break these curses. Like, it's gotta stop. Give me a high five. Boom. I don't want a white officer to kill my son. That's my biggest fear for my son. I honestly feel like that I am breaking generational curses yeah. and breaking the chains of suppression. I feel more alive now than ever before. I want everybody else to feel what I'm feeling right now. Like I feel that strength that I, I don't have to be suppressed anymore. I'm free. Hey guys, it's Anna in Franklin County, Virginia. Thank you so much for watching this video. Is your neighborhood also confronting systemic racism? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to AJ+.